Hey there, it's Ikigami JJ again, and I'm back for another solo session of Lancer Abyss Call. Today, I'm joined with my good friend Ali. Say hi. Hey, yo, it's your boy. And we will be following the journey of his character, another canary from the Canary Institute. This one is Throne 8. Now, before we jump into the story proper, Ali, do you want to take a second to describe some ideas going into this character? Sure. Uh, like, currently, this character is, like, definitely one of the, like, way younger generations, right? Mm -hmm. He's, uh, he's pretty inexperienced when it comes to, like, actually going out there, but he's, like, he's been extensively trained and, like, has some psionic abilities yes definitely being the later generations you are something of like a final product something that the canary institute has worked for for many many years and that has given you paracausal abilities and we'll explore those abilities uh as we go on throughout this campaign for sure but like my guy like in terms of like his generation he's like probably relatively middle of the road he doesn't really stand out he's not the kind of dude that right. really stands out in the crowd he's not like overperforming yada 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 he's you just, like, are as expected of of your generation so to speak which yeah. obviously there are higher expectations being a layered, layered generation but if you were to compare uh throne eight amongst the other canaries within his generation he wouldn't stand out uh i'm gonna actually say that recently he's been getting super into like cradle culture you know what i mean oh that's very interesting yes with the access of the blink net you definitely we have access to the vast array of human knowledge including any culture on cradle itself which is the seat of the union the cradle culture would be kind of very developed and very complex it is amongst core worlds a core world so think and these are kind of post-scarcity utopic societies so they have a lot of time for the arts and a cultural expression and diversity by those sort of means and being not limited by the constraints of the border and the fringe systems. I guess the last thing I'll say is that he's like, he's super on board for like our mission statement. He's mm -hmm. going into these delves because it's like, this is going to like, we're going to discover things that are going to help humanity. And that's good news bears. Exactly. Yeah. The mission that has been bestowed upon all of the canaries to explore the unique hyperstructures that exist only in this system is somewhat of a one in a million opportunity. You would have been indoctrinated into a support of this cause from a young age, but even amongst your peers, you genuinely believe in this cause. With that though, let's start with a very unique day in your training as a canary now most of the time uh, in your life so far you have trained with your fellow gen mates other generation eights but for this mission you and only you from your generation were called to come to a outpost on the edge of the menu system you were asked to come to a satellite that orbits Hera, moon of Deus. Hera is an ice moon covered in an ever frozen layer of ice with a liquid core. What's unique about Hera, and you would know this, it is the home to the third and furthest from the star's hyperstructure, Tartarus. So, as your character comes into this, this remote, it's a research space station, you're greeted by various subalterns. These are humanoid robotic beings that are not sentient but serve basic tasks and purposes. And you're directed towards a group of people and you'd recognize them. Or rather, even if you've not personally met an L of them, they'll be very recognizable to you. There are other thrones. Th 
thrones from the other generation. People who say, share the same genetic base as you. And at the center of this milling crowd of clones, you would find, uh, well, an interesting character. A person that you've been told about all your life, but I don't think until today have had the chance to meet. Standing tall in the middle of the group will be Throne One, the progenitor of all your throne, the prodigy of the Generation Ones, whose DNA all the later thrones are based off of. Will you approach the crowd? Will you attempt to talk to anybody? Will you just kind of stay silently and wait for uh, somebody from the Institute to come and give your orders? What are you thinking about doing? So imagine like before Throne One shows up, I'm just going around and be like, Hey Throne, how's it going Throne? How you doing Throne? Like, what's up Throne? Um, like just, you know, greeting all these people. Cause like, we're all like, like depending on like, on the lower levels at least, we're all like relatively equal and it's like, Yo, what's up? How's it going? Right. You know, but then he, the second like, this guy comes out and be like, Oh shit. And I'm just gonna like, like stand, stand up straight, be like, I am not fucking dressed for this. Uh. You Wait. you feel this thing. He'll look upon you and kind of smile and just wave off at ease. We're all same of blood here, just grinning with a wide and comforting smile. He seems very chill. Cool. I'm still really awkward. I'm just like, uh, I, 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 sir. Yeah, he looks at you as you kind of stammer to say that, and it's like, hmm, you seem rather young. What generation are you? Generation 8, sir. Hmm. Ah, one of the newer ones. So, then you would have some paracausal abilities. I'm excited to see them in action in our upcoming test. I'll do my best, sir. I'll try not to let you down. <laughs> he nods, kind of chuckling at how, like, serious you're being. Kind of, like, do that classic older brotherly slash fatherly tap on the shoulder and then move on to talking with the other thrones. Soon enough, some very well-dressed individuals will come up. By their garb, you can tell that they are most likely from SSC, which is the parent company of the Canary Institute. You also see one researcher from the Canary Institute appear, one that you've seen occasionally, you know, throughout your training. And the researcher will announce that we are going to have a very special cross-generational training exercise take place today. Throne One, you will be assigned team captain and can direct the rest as you see fit. The mission objective is simple and he pops, uh, clicks a button and it shows a map laying kind of like the terrain. It looks like the terrain on Hera in one particular section of the moon. And there shows three flashing dots. You have three objectives to capture and each of them will be defended through various means. We will be monitoring your performances from this station. Best of luck. And with that, the researchers will turn around to leave. A subaltern will come up and inform you that the Beck printers are ready to print any um, mechanized cavalry to your specifications. I'm gonna say like I've I've been through training before. I have an idea of like what my mech is currently. Mm -hmm. So knowing the mech configuration that you're most comfortable with, you will simply enter transferring your data from your like, you know, cloud profile uh, into the terminal and it will begin printing off the mechs. At that same time, uh, Throne One will call for a group meeting. He asks everyone, he's like, okay, everybody, we have three objectives. So we will be pairing off in teams of three to try to accomplish them in the shortest amount of time. But to, in order for us to efficiently coordinate amongst ourselves, let's take a little minute to get to know each other, shall we? And he'll, he's kind of going to do a little bit of an icebreaker, trying to talk about 
you know, his mecha, mech and its abilities, and then kind of go around in a circle and encourage everybody else to share, so to speak, about their mecha. So that way he can properly formulate the teams. He will describe his mech as, I, my mech is a solidly in a defender role and can provide great cover. And, you know, he goes around, another person talks about his mech is much more uh, melee focused and blah, 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 this thing. Soon enough, the turn comes around to you. What do you, how do you describe your mech loadout? To say my mech, um, while I'm only license level one, uh, it's currently built around um, mostly support and a little bit of uh, defense and a lot of controller, a little bit of support, and that's most of it. A controller support. He nods very well. After, of course, listening to all of you, he will, you can see he's he's very good at this kind of leading people and uh, managing this thing. He will quickly uh, devise uh, teams of three based on the strengths and weaknesses that you have presented. He's listing off the third team and he says, finally, with me, throne eight and throne four, we'll be taking on the center objective. I'm just like panicking. I'm like, oh god, oh fuck. Okay, actually, do you have? Let's let's look at some of the triggers. What triggers do you have? Let's see. Sorry, give me one second. I I have act un, unseen or unheard, hack or fix, read a situation, and stay cool. Actually. Oh, stay cool. Stay cool would actually be very important here. Let's get, let's have the first roll of the session, shall we? Let's see if you can stay cool. Let's see if I can keep my nerves about me. Yeah, you did it. Okay, you don't. Hello. You are ice cold. While internally you may be nervous, excited, you know, anxious about being paired up with the Gen 1 of your particular Canary class, outwardly you keep a very competent and... It's like, it's like full business. I'm, I'm being professional. It's like, you know, like I, I'm, I'm doing my job, right? Exactly. You also get to see the other throne that has been paired with you. Throne four. I'm just gonna like, have I ever seen him around or is this just like a person I've never met? You won't have met throne four due to the generational gap being so large between you two. So I'll just like give him kind of like a, kind of like a generic greeting, like, hi, nice to meet you. I'm throne eight. Yeah, Throne 4 will kind of have a relaxed smile about him. He seems much more excited for this uh, journey. It's like, yeah, I'm Throne 4. You're one of the newer ones, right? The special ones that can do all the crazy paracausal stuff. I'm excited to see what you got, kid, on the field. I'll do what I can. And with that, and the teams and the assignments made, and your mechs printed off, each of you load up your mechs, into the shuttles and head towards planet Far, or I guess I should say moonfall in this case. Above the frozen fields of Hera, your shuttle descends over, its hatch opening and each of your mechs dropping into the icy tundra below. As all of you kind of make your uh, trek across the tundra obviously throne one with his very large size two mech dwarfing uh each of yours he he points out the path for you to follow trying to avoid areas where the ice is thin and water can be seen underneath he says to each of you we're in the field calling each of us by throne name might get confusing so it might be better if we go by call signs. Uh, he's gonna ask for your call sign first, uh, Throne 8. I'm gonna say, aye aye sir, my call sign is Jellyfish. Jellyfish. Ah, very fascinating choice. He says, my call sign is Man of War. <laughs> Good call sign, sir. <laughs> In my head, I'm just like, that's really on the nose. <laughs> but you know what, fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, Throne 8. Man call sign will be oh shit i didn't think of a fucking call sign for him uh let's say his crawl sign is going to be uh, sunflower 
sure sunflower it is sure let's go with that sunflower I a painting and i was like that painting it's a sunflower on it sunflower sure throne eight uh will be called sunflower of course each of your mechs also have uh individual names yours would be ganymede uh and throne ones is calamitous which if anyone gets those references you can get those references and throne fours is throne four brackets mech <laughs> don't worry about it it's not important <laughs> look we know which npcs are important here <laughs> i i'm big in throne four he seems like a cool dude okay yeah, I mean, he's all right he's all right as you walk further on, he he uh, throne one will chirp. Uh, actually, throne four will chirp because he's walking up ahead. Looks like we it looks like we have contacts up ahead. Uh, I'm getting something in my on my sensors. Stay vigilant. Man of war, throne one will say. Ebisu, link up our mechs, and in each of your dashboards, a s image appears. An image that seems very familiar to you in shape, yet at the same time, slightly alien. This is the image of Man of War Throne One's NHP. This oh, is I the see. image of Ebisu. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Hold up a second, that looks awfully familiar. What the fuck, that's just my character, but cooler. Shh, that's not fair. Shh, don't worry, I have out. things planned. I have things planned. Don't worry about it. It's fine. No, I'm going to keep that. Don't worry about it. I have things planned. It's all good. <laughs> Ebisu will speak in a voice. Again, it sounds like a, it's uh, it's as if it's a younger version of Throne 1. Uh, of age, which makes a very similar age version of you. And it will speak in a very kind of monotone voice. I'm linking up all our sensory datas together. Uh, keep an eye for all enemies. I'll be monitoring all of our mech's health. It's uncanny hearing your voice thrown back at you, but slightly distorted in the way. Thrown and back at me? Sorry. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> That's actually kind of funny. <laughs> anyway, continue. As you cautiously now progress forward through this Chandra, you will encounter your first enemy. And with that, let's go into combat, shall we? From beyond the large crystalline structures that are piercing out of the... Uh, jutting out of the ice, you see two enemy RV, RPVs come out. Now you're aware that RPVs are kind of like drones, they're unmanned mechs. And it makes sense that they would place such things uh, as enemies to test you. Player turn first, so you can decide who in your team gets to activate first. So what is the deal with throne? Mech. Like what? Throne four uh, will say that they are generalist mid-ranged mech. Okay, and uh, throne one is more of a defender type. Yes. So I'm. It probably makes the most sense for throne one to kind of like go up first and maybe like I don't. Know. He can do whatever he wants, but like. Yeah, can, you just nominate him. You just have to nominate the person. Uh, I'll handle the move itself. Yeah, I think it makes the most sense for him to go first. Okay, so throne one shall start the combat first okay so it will step forward using its movement kind of intervening in front of you two and its large mass you will know will allow you to use it as heavy cover further it will use friendly interdiction as a protocol at the beginning of its turn it will nominate the top avenger and it will nominate, well, you said you were the support, right? So it will nominate you as the person that it is uh, defending. It's going to quick action, lock on, and then immediately consume that lock on to launch its rotary grenade launcher at the target. And it does hit, 
the target doing four points of damage. Fuck it. It really, it really had to be double Avengers. God damn it. <laughs> you can't kill one of them without the other one going fucking apeshit. Hey, sometimes I like to have fun encounters. Let me have my fun. <laughs> I know, I know. It's just like whenever there's an Avenger, it's like, oh, kill that thing first. But now there's two of them. So it is damaged, but it's still standing. The rotary grenade, you know, breaks off a part of its armor, but it still seems pretty well in health. Next, that same Avenger actually is going to go. So it's going to move one square closer to its ally still in range of you and it's going to target well since it has more movement it can move more uh let me just move it to here instead and then then it'll attack oh wow it still is not in range jesus christ <laughs> does it have any more movement left it might not have any more okay it still has more movement left thank god okay now it would be in range and it will target with Throne 4. Thankfully though, since Throne 4 is adjacent to uh, Man of War, he will get hard cover against this attack. Oh wow, it actually hit. I'm genuinely surprised. Damn. Damn. And it's armor piercing too. So Throne, uh, your armor doesn't actually, it's armor unfortunately it does not help it. Throne 4, so it'll take four points of damage. Further, it will be impacted by the erupting shrapnel. When the Avenger attacks damages another character, they are forced the character to succeed on an engineering save or be covered with... So engineering save, let's do the engineering save. Stats, engineering, roll. It fails. Uh, okay, fails. Uh, explosive shrapnel to the end of his next turn. They take three kinetic damage. Each time they make a melee range attack. Okay, good to know. Uh, who would you like to go next? Uh, I think, I think I'll go next. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to deploy a turret drone. Yay. I'm going to overcharge mm -hmm. and do this. So add one heat. Okay. I'm going to put it here so that it's still within adjacency of him. I'll actually place it one ahead. That's the first thing I'm doing. The second thing I'm going to do is lay down a good old fashioned wandering nightmare. Basically, it's a blast two zone where uh, within senses of line and sight, where basically they can't take reactions, they're slowed, and at the start of that turn, they have to make a system save or else take two heat. Uh, okay, so then the next person to go would be the only Avenger that's left. Okay, final Avenger. Seeing what you've done. So moving into the area doesn't do anything, correct? I do not believe so, though. Okay, cool. Then it's just gonna move through it. Oh, okay. It's a bit more than its total movement. Interesting. Okay, so then it'll have to move and boost to get to here. Gotta take up that action economy. It's going to attack you, Jellyfish. So let's target you. You will have hard to cover. And it is going to use its uh, slug pistol. It still hit. Amazing. Goddamn. So you take four armor piercing uh, energy damage, and then I need you to make me engineering check. You Ooh, did not succeed sad. on the engineering check. So sad. So Whatever. until the, uh, the next turn, you'll take three AP kinetic damage each time you make a melee or range attack. I guess I just need to not do that. And then the final one, throne four, will go. Uh, turn four, it's damaged, but it will continue uh, it doesn't care it's going to uh fire off both its underslung uh grenade launcher and its heavy assault rifle so the underslung is going to aim it at here blasting both of them and let's see what it can do so it hits the top one uh, and it does four, uh, yeah, four damage. And then it's going to fire its, uh, 
on the same one up top. He's going to fire his heavy assault rifle. And let's roll. Fuck him up. It misses. Damn. However, it's attacked two times with a ranged attack, so it takes a total of six AP. Uh, uh, AP, uh, was it kinetic or was it energy, actually? No, kinetic AP damage as the shrapnel inside begins exploding in its armor. Damn. It's badly hurt. You hate to see it. Uh, throne one gone. It's like stand down throne. Uh, 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 th stand down throne for any more, and you'll even damage. You'll da just damage your mech further. Uh, and I think that's the top of the round. Uh, beginning of next round. Uh, so since players went last last time, enemies will go first. So let's start with the top one, shall we? Uh, this boy. So he has to make a system save, I believe? Um, yes, he has to make a system save. System save. Roll. Does an 11 succeed? My save record is an 11. So it does succeed. Damn, this is so sad. Okay. Uh, with that, the first thing it'll do is it'll move out of that. <laughs> And then, seeing yeah, that how Throne 4 is already hurt, it's going to aim and fire at it again. This time, uh, locking on and then firing. Okay. Lock so on. Throne 4 is not doing so hot, right? Not doing hot at all. Okay. So... Oh wait, I just realized something. You put a turret down, correct? Yes, I did. And the top white took damage, so the turret would actually shoot at it as well. How much damage yeah, does the yeah. turret do? Um, the turret does three kinetic damage. Three kinetic damage. So it'll take three kinetic damage as well. So it's fairly hurt as well, but it's gonna try to finish off the wounded uh, Throne 4. And Throne 4 is not looking great. So, because of course your target is still adjacent to uh, uh, Throne 1, he does get hard cover. And it helps! Oh yeah. The hard cover, uh, he, uh, as Throne 1 puts his shield forward and is able to block the incoming attack. Player turn. Who wants to go next? So Throne 1 wasn't affected by the, like, the weird debuff thing they had, right? So Throne 1 was not affected by the, yes, the debuff. It, he was never hit by any of the attacks. Okay. So I guess it makes sense for him to go first in case he manages to, like, yeah. Uh, okay. Well, you can, yeah. Uh, Man of War, Calamitous, goes next. He positions himself better to uh, protect uh, your damaged uh, ally. And he will cast... Uh, let's see. It's going to, yeah, it's going to use... Friendly interdiction as a protocol and switch it over to protecting throne four instead uh, against the top ones attack top Avengers attacks uh, Unfortunately, it's uh, It's rotary grenade launcher is loading so it will not be able to do anything else this turn Well, actually no, it has a full action left. That was a protocol. So it'll use a full action to reload its loaded rotary grenade launcher and that's his turn. Okay. Uh, next okay. Avenger. The Avenger will... Seeing this, but still wanting to f well, finish off the weakened target, will take aim uh, and fire at uh, the uh, Throne 4. Again, uh, locking on and then firing. We'll have hardcover, slug pistol. Let's see if you can hit. It isn't hitting as Hell the yeah. armored protection of uh, Throne uh, 2 uh, keeps it in check. You love to see it. Player turn. Which one do you want Throne 4 to go or you, you're going to go? I'd say Throne 4. Throne 4? Yeah. Unfortunately, Throne 4's both weapons were loading. So 
it will have to spend essentially its entire turn Why loading. Why everybody got loading weapons? And then it's your turn because there's no more enemies left. Sure, I guess I'll fire my loading weapons. Now um, remember, you still have the uh, the effect active on you. I know, I know I'm gonna take a ton of damage. Three points of damage only for each attack. For each attack. Okay, is that for each attack per mount or for each attack per weapon? For each time they make an um, attack. So oh, it, God damn it. <laughs> so yeah, if you do ox ox, that's two attacks. The separate attack rolls. You know what? Screw it. Unraveler. Um, okay, so screw you. Unraveler on the on the injured one, this guy. Okay. Uh, it's not doing the thing. Yeah. There we go. On that guy. Uh, um, and is that going to be a barrage or a skirmish? You know what? Let's make it a barrage. And my second weapon will be my heavy weapon. Okay, sure. And your heavy weapon is targeting whom? I'm gonna do heavy weapon first, attack the this guy. Yeah, top yeah. Avenger. Bottom oh, no, guy. Bottom Avenger, sorry. Okay. And then uh, Unraveler, attack the top guy after that. Okay, makes sense. Uh, okay, and so go ahead, make your rolls. Cool. Okay, let's see how I did. <laughs> so many tags. Oh, God. That is a lot of fucking tags. <laughs> Wait, why do I have like a lot of these twice? I don't know why don't it's know. happening. I think something went wrong with the upload, but whatever, doesn't matter. It hits, does nine freaking points of damage, Jesus Christ. Hell yeah. It's hurt. Cool. It's but you hurt. get take three points of kinetic damage. Yeah, I'm aware. And then your second attack? And my second attack with my unraveler. Okay, let's see what I get. Six points of damage, which isn't enough to actually kill it. So, so it takes two points of damage. And I take three points of damage. I'm technically doing more damage to myself than the enemy. <laughs> this is, yeah, this is not efficient to DPR. However, uh, actually, I forgot about, uh, about turn drone. Remember, now, of course, it's only right. one of them I can hit. Which one? Right. Okay, do I have an idea of which one of these guys is more messed the, up right now? That's the the top one looks more damaged. Okay, so I'll I'll do the top one. It's very damaged, the top one, but it's still alive. Hanging in there. Okay, and that's everyone's turn. However, as the battle is raging on and continuing, Oops. suddenly there's a shake in the ice. Cracks begin to feel on the surface. There's a big rumbling that almost knocks your mechs prone. And then out from the water in the, in the opening up top above you appears. The fuck is that? <laughs> Looks like something out of Subnautica. It might be. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be really funny if I just called that. As a large megafauna erupts from the ice. Please attack those guys. Please attack those guys. It's going to turn towards the nearest thing. It, it, it seems to be no, attracted to the surface uh, uh, by the explosions. Uh, it's gonna turn to the nearest enemy. I'm not going to go after drones. Uh, oh it's going to turn to the nearest enemy and it's going to leap out of the water at it. And wait, okay. To be fair, I think I'm, I'm shooting myself in the foot here. Okay. But I'm pretty sure that guy, but, uh, this guy is closer. Okay. If you say so. <laughs> I just want to be fair, okay? Yeah, I mean, he it, is closer. He is closer, and you know what? It is valid. What you said is valid. So that would be very sad. We'll leap at Throne One and attempt to grapple it. Uh, so it has accuracy to its grasping claw. So, uh, and grab. It's grappled. It will then attempt oh, to bite into the armor of Throne One's mech. 
uh, not with accuracy. Eight points of damage, which it has three armor, so it gets reduced to five points of damage. But it's still badly hurt by the claws and the teeth tearing into the mecha. Now, I'm going to have to do an opposed hull check to see who wins this grapple real quick. Okay. 23. Uh, yeah. Is there something that you can... I was going to empath him, but I don't think my empath's going to help. 21. <laughs> yeah. Now that it's successfully grappled and both of these are moving together, it's going to begin to pull uh, thrown one into the water. Oh, that's really bad. That's the end of its turn. As thrown is barely struggling, keep it, what we call uh, keep its footing. As this this giant monstrosity has erupted from the ice and is grasping onto it, trying to sink it in to the water. Player turn. So like, what's the vibe of these like Avengers? Like, do they have enough AI to be like, no, this isn't training anymore. That thing is serious. Or oh, they just, like, the, yeah, they're, the they're, no, they're RPVs. They just have been programmed to attack things that they're, that's defending them. They might attack the sea monster instead, but it's a 50-50, I would say. God damn it. They're not very smart. This is so sad. I wish I had things with knockback right now. But unfortunately, that would be I, helpful. <laughs> that would be ideal. But alas. Damn it, a hacker's worst enemy. Flesh the, and blood. Though I actually realized something. Wait, there would be something that would actually help uh, him. So, because he was attacked in the melee, uh, his near threat denial system will activate. So it will do two points of damage to the monster. Cool, at least it's taking damage. Um, I guess number one priority is to like distract that thing. Yeah. So like, uh, what is my speed? So uh, your speed is four. It is only four, alas. Uh, okay. So in my, from my perspective, right? This is like a, a really bad situation. Yes. Right? In the sense that like, that mech is heavy as shit. That mech does not look so, like it is able so to it, swim in water. Underwater, that's really bad. So like, and also he's a generation one. So he's objectively like more important than I am. Okay. So like my goal right now is just to get up to this thing and like try and take its attention away. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Okay. Sure. How do you plan like, on doing that? Going up and fucking shooting it. Okay. Uh, I'm assuming you're going to shoot before you reach adjacent to it, just because you don't want that, you know, negative to hit. Yeah. Okay. Definitely. Uh, yeah. Th can I split up movement like that? Yes, can I, like, you can. Move a bit? Shoot, yeah. Move? Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. That is totally okay. Well, I mean, I could just shoot before. Yeah. Actually. If you want to do but that, that's fine. For dramatic purposes, yeah. I'm going to move up just so that I'm as close as possible before I shoot the thing. Sure. Uh, yeah. Oh, and I can't be in the same thing as my drone, I assume. Yes. But no, it's a... What size is it? It's a size one, right? Then you can't. No. Yeah. But I can go around it and go you, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can go this thing. You can go technically through it. So we can just say you do it at this part of your movement where you're like here, and then you can just go through it. You know what? Reliable two damage is better than nothing. So, um... I'm gonna flex mount, um... Uh, missile rack, missile rack, and then I'm gonna unravel her. Sure. And it's gonna be a barrage, of course. Of course. Uh, so, missile rack. Remember, as an Everest, you also have that one free action that you can always take. Right. I do have that free action. So. So, technically, if you overcharge again, uh, uh, and take the free action, you can reload your, uh, anti-material rifle, and then shoot it and the missile racks. Yes. I think that is what I'm gonna do. So okay. let me take that overcharge sheet real quick. So that'd be a D3 now? That would be a D3. Yeah, that's so pretty that's good. Not right, that's the first one. This is the real one. That's still uh, a one. Ah, yeah, so good roll. But yeah, 
Um, so I'm gonna spend the full action to uh, what's it called? Reload. Reload. And then I'm gonna Everest action, and I'm gonna. Uh, overcharge. so since you're spending the full action, remember, reload is just one of the things you can do. So you can actually click on your token, and then do the uh, the, if you have the uh, stabilize sh uh, shortcut in your bar. So, cool. Uh, I'm gonna restore HP, and then. Okay, you're gonna spend a repair to restore HP. Sure enough. Okay, so that costs a repair. Yeah. Got it. Eh, sure. I feel like that's reasonable at this point. Yep. Um, and I guess... Reload. Yeah, reload. Yeah. So yeah, now we're trying to hit the damn thing. So, missile rack. Oh, shit. First one you. misses. You're shitting me! Oh my god! What are these fucking rules? <laughs> <sighs> I should have gone with a reliable two damage. <laughs> oh, fucking damn it. Uh... Okay. Let's hope the anti-material rifle comes in clutch. Clutch, yeah. Please. That's oh my god! You're kidding me, right? <laughs> oh my fucking god. <laughs> oh, Jesus. I'm just, I'm just shooting blindly. <laughs> and I'm a, yeah, I'm a go up to this guy. I'm chilling. I'm shooting blindly at it. I'm not doing a great job. I'm, yeah. <laughs> it happens sometimes. It do happen sometimes. <laughs> With that, I guess the Avenger will go, the very damaged one. Uh, let's see which one it ends up targeting. You or it. Avengers, you better assemble your Yep, ass. and it attacks it. Lucky oh you. Oh my god. <laughs> Lucky you. It's going to do an auto lock on and slug pistol for armor piercing. Nice. Good job, Avenger. As it screams and uh, what do we call uh, wretches back at the pain of the impact of the laser a uh, slug beam shooting out essentially molten uh, 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 it's, it's essentially molten shrapnel at it. Uh, who wants to go? Who goes next? <laughs> Let's give my guy a chance to escape. I believe in you, Mister Generation One. Okay, time to roll the hull. Fifteen versus this thing's. Jesus oh, Christ! God damn it. <laughs> it cannot roll low. Jesus Christ! Rolls have not been good since this thing showed up. It is still, unfortunately, grappled. So let's see what our boy can do to get out of this situation, if there's anything he can do at all. Okay, so it has a rotary grenade launcher active, and it has the heavy assault shield. Oh, wait, heavy assault shield has knocked back one. This works. Shoot it, shoot it. <laughs> so it's actually going to lock on and then heavy assault shield just because it really wants to succeed. Yeah, yeah, yeah 100%. I, un I completely understand my guy. <laughs> uh, yeah. Hey, I totally planned that out to be a thing. It does hit. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. It knocks it back one, getting it out of grapple at the same okay, time doing has, three points of damage. Yeah, and it has movement, so you know, get the hell out of here. You're gonna sink. And then it'll use this removing movement. remaining movement to move back here. That's as far as it can move. Doesn't have much movement. Great, now I've made myself a gigantic target. Oh, also, uh, it takes additional damage due to the... Oh, yeah, the, this thing, yeah, three more, so... It's badly hurt and annoyed and angry. The next Avenger goes. Listen, dude, what are you even gonna do with the hunk of metal? You can't eat it. <laughs> it doesn't understand that. Okay, it's so gonna attack you guys. God damn it, bastard. Since you're out of position, uh, yeah, it's gonna aim at you. Lock on and fire. You son of a bitch. Four armor piercing. Fantastic. And you take that uh, same... Uh, what's, what's it? You take the Don't erupting shrapnel. Roll for that? Yeah, which is engineering roll, please. Cool. Do I know the DC for that? You haven't succeeded yet. You do not know the DC. Okay. Also, I couldn't even give empath to myself if I wanted to. So never mind. Wait, succeed? you succeed, yeah. Hell yeah! 
Oh yeah. Alright, let me check. Yeah, you do succeed. You'd love to see it. Okay, throwing force turn. It's gonna be unsure. Like he's gonna ask for a complete. Who who should I focus on? Who should I attack? Are you gonna give him any suggestions? Are you gonna try to take lead here? Are you gonna? I mean, like I, we have like I have literally like our progenerator who is way more experienced right here. I'm gonna wait to see what. See, he okay, says. he says. Right the progenerator change. just says, forget about the RPVs. Uh, that thing is a bigger danger right now, and he's going to take in charge. Uh, in this moment, uh, and oh. Roger that. Uh, Throne four replies. Let's see what's his range on his things. Oh yeah, 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 yeah well within range. It's going to fire both. It's uh, do the same thing. Fire both its under slung uh, grenade launcher and its uh, rifle for damage. So. Does this thing look hurt? I like. Animals? It looks pretty badly hurt. Yes. Okay. Cool. And then it's going to fire with its uh, da, 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 heavy assault rifle. Hell yeah. Cause this thing is like a fucking. And it misses. Rip. It still takes reliable something. It know. takes reliable two damage. Top of the next round, the monster is angry and what we call just screaming in pain with the various things that's atta attacking it it blindly is going to lash out to the thing nearest to it yep i have made myself a target it's going to grapple you first it's successfully grappled you give me a health check yeah. oh you are controlling oh, yeah. the castle yeah. <laughs> how the hell did that happen <laughs> Fucking Mr. Mr. Chonky, like, gigantic tank over here I was like, oh no, it's dragging me. But then I'm just like, size one, crony, like, oh no, you're coming with me. Amazing. Which also means you can end the grapple in the beginning of your turn if you choose to. But also, it can't drag you into the water, which is great for you. It's still going to try to attack you. Eight points of damage. God damn it. I am not looking well. That, that heal was a wise decision. Okay. That was the monster's turn. <sighs> Player turn. Who do you choose to go? Um, I'm going to choose myself. Okay. Because I need it right now. Um, <clears throat> let's see. So... What I'm going to do is, first thing, I'm going to drop the grapple, which is the thing you said I could do. Yeah, you can just do it at the beginning of a turn, so. Yep, you're no longer grappled. Okay. Uh, I'm going to drop the grapple. I'm going to, uh, what's it called? Full action. Okay, I think this should still work on it, despite it being like a fleshy monster thing. Yeah. If I wandering nightmare it, it says uh, characters within the affected area cannot take reactions. So it yeah. shouldn't be able to take a reaction. Yeah. Okay, so you can yeah, do one round, but it wouldn't be able to take reactions. Wandering Nightmare it again. That should be a full action. Uh, let me move my thing over. Yep. Uh, I'm going to do it like so that it's still like. Yeah. Does, so it's still like touching the other guys. Yeah. Cool. Like and that that does still affect it, right? Yeah. And those not fully covered. Yeah, yeah. Is that how that works? Yeah. yeah. If it's any of the hexes, then it works. Okay. Cool. So uh, I'm gonna Wandering Nightmare it and these other two bastards. Yeah. Um, and I'm going to get the hell out of there. Okay, use your movement. Yeah, okay. Uh, and I'm gonna get the heck out of there. Nice. Using Wandering Nightmare uh, very successfully to get out. Yeah. Gotta avoid those. Oh, what is it? Overwatch? Overwatch. Yeah. Next. I keep calling it opportunity attacks. Yeah, but it's Overwatch. I mean, you know, I get it. Uh, the Avenger is going to go. The top one. Let's see who attacks. Also, oh. it's the start of a turn. It needs to make a system save because it's in Wandering Nightmare. Oh, uh, yep. You're right. Does it, it fails. So what happens? I have an 11. So it is slowed and takes two heat. Okay. It rolled the two, so it's still going to try to attack the monster. Uh, let's see if we can finish it off. So, yeah. Uh, I believe you have... 
And sh yeah, shoot. Let's shoot. <laughs> it missed. Rip. Polaris turn. Who do you choose to so, go? I'm gonna say throne four. Sunflower. I'm gonna say sunflower. It's a sunflower. Sunflower will go, and he was gonna spend his entire turn reloading. <laughs> Didn't you just reload? <laughs> he reloaded oh the turn. God. He has to reload oh every other God. turn. <laughs> Oh my god, dude! <laughs> <laughs> Next Avengers! Turn. Hey, it attacks the monster again! Hell yeah. You're doing great with the rolls. This is. You love to see it. Also, uh, system save. Because it's right. also one yeah. right uh, Systems. Roll. Does it 12 succeed? It does succeed. Okay, so nothing happens? Yeah, nothing happens. Okay, and it'll shoot the damn thing. Uh, let's go slug pistol. Finally hits. And with that, the, 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 the molten beam of superheated metal will burn through uh, the monster's skull, slaying it completely. Woo, go Avenger. With that, uh, at, at, at this point, with uh, Calamitous' turn, the last one remaining, he uses his action to uh, call up an emergency beacon up to uh, the uh, up to the the various Canary uh, uh, Institute monitors that have been monitoring it, reporting in this unexpected event that has occurred and calling off the training. We're fine. <laughs> it's dead. That's what counts. Uh, he reports, we're not sure if any other are lurking. Uh, the, the, the people did not, uh, the examiners did not properly scope out this area. That's a good point. I don't want to die. Yeah, and with that, the uh, the training event is unfortunately called off to some people's uh, dismay. And you are all taken back up to the satellite that uh, orbits Hera, the moon uh, of Deus. Uh, as uh, as you are all debriefed of the events that uh, occur, you can see Throne uh, going off to the side and having a very stern discussion with uh, what looks like a Canary Institute member. He seems very upset by the fact that you know proper measures were not taken for this uh, training exercise uh, and that. Apparently, it wasn't just your group, but other groups also uh, encountered other local megafauna that posed a lot of danger to them. Thankfully, though, no throne uh, was har died or was injured during this exercise. He comes back, you know, obviously a little bit irritated at the events, but then he looks at you and kind of taps in uh, kind of shoulder and he says, Really good work out there. Honestly, just... you saved my butt. That was very heroic if you're trying to charge in there. Uh, I'm just gonna like, I imagine when he approaches me, I'm just like exhausted and like kind of lying with my head back and then he taps me I'm like, oh yeah, uh, um, yeah, um, th thank you, sir. I'm, I just did what I felt was the mo like what, what I felt was the best thing to do at the time. Mm. It takes a brave individual to risk uh, your life the way you did. Though, I have to admit, it was a little bit of a foolhardy move, trying to get that creature's attention that way. I would say that is that is fair, sir. Uh, though, to be completely honest, if I'm going to be completely honest with you, sir, if, if it were a choice between you or me, you were far more valuable. He'll fr actually frown it when he says that. And why do you think that so? Uh, I'm kind of going to be like, 
is this even a like part of me is like this is a weird question to have to answer i thought this was just like a given right you know? yeah for you you seems like oh, why is he even asking me this is like a trick question like what right yeah and i'm just gonna be like you the experience you possess the ability to teach future generations and the like combat abilities you have shown in the fields are like far more value are far more valuable to this organization and there's a reason why we were made using your genetic code he'll shake his head disapprovingly and sigh <sighs> i guess i can't blame you for thinking that those damn institute people have always been heartless but listen to me and listen to me well jellyfish no life is worth more than another in this grand scale of humanity everyone's well-being is precious i am not worth more than you i'm just kind of like taken aback by the fact that he would say that uh but i'm just gonna say aye aye sir i will try to take those words to heart plus and he kind of taps this thing being your genetic progenitor it makes me your technically your older brother and hey what older bro lets his little bro take the hit for him if anything it's my job to be looking after all of you uh i'm gonna like i i'm kind of at the point where like i don't know how to respond to him being this humble yeah so i'm just gonna be like um f fair enough sir fair enough and with uh and he says though i have to say your skills and your vigor that you have displayed have impressed me and he'll exchange contact information with each other i I very eagerly await. Uh, 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 I very eagerly look forward to how you progress in your path to becoming a lancer. Thank you, sir. It's an honor to receive such a compliment from you. And with that, you know, you would essentially pass each other.